Hey everyone, Brian for Short Circuit Brewers. Welcome to our channel where we do beer reviews, product reviews, DIY how-tos, and brew days. In this series, we are going to explore electric brewing, and we'll get started on that right after this. Welcome to our electric brewing series. If you've found this video, then you're kind of wondering, what is electric brewing? Well, in the simplest sense, it could be brewing on your electric stove in your kitchen. In this multi-part series, we're gonna break down the ins and outs of electric brewing, and hopefully you'll come away with a little better understanding of what it is, how you might adventure into it, as well as all the different styles and types of electric brewing. Just like regular brewing, electric brewing can be as simple or as complex as you like. For instance, you have in brewing, you have people that do all extract batches, and then you have people that do all grain brewing, reverse osmosis water, and build their water up from there and have a completely complex brewing day. On that same token, there's also differences in electric brewing. So let's jump into it and talk about some of the pros of electric brewing. First off is the matter of efficiency. With a propane system, when you're heating your vessel, you are letting a lot of the heat and energy escape from the side of the kettle. Um, underneath, there's no real way to actually directly impact what's in the vessel. With Electric brewing, that is the opposite because the element is in direct contact. And so your energy transfer based on electric versus propane is much greater because your element is in direct contact with the wart. One of the next advantages of electric brewing is the cost. Initially, that might seem counterintuitive because there is some cost associated with doing electric. But in the long run, when you look at the amount of energy and time and effort in obtaining propane, and what propane costs per batch. A five gallon batch roughly costs about four to six dollars to do a five gallon batch. On an electric system, a five gallon batch is probably two dollars or less, um, depending on what your system is and how you do it. So there is an advantage there. Another advantage to electric brewing is safety. And, and that might seem contradictory initially, but when you look at the possible risks of using a propane system in a, a confined space. I mean, my brewery is here in my basement, so um, I definitely, if I use my used a propane system down here, I would have to exhaust all of that CO2. I would have to exhaust all those fumes. And not only that, I would also have to make up that air that I'm pulling out of the, the basement. So, you know, in the wintertime, it would be horrible if I didn't have some sort of makeup system. It would pull all the heated air out of my house. With an electric system, that is really not even an issue. The only thing you need in an electric system is to be able to vent the steam that comes off of the boil kettle. And that is only for an hour or so of time when you are actually brewing. Uh, when you're boiling your wort, you only need to remove the steam. Um, and you do need to do that. Um, here's a picture of my garage whenever I was first electric brewing and had the door shut and went through probably about 20, 30 minutes of a boil session and it gets pretty cloudy in there. So you definitely have to have a uh, exhaust fan to exhaust the steam out, but that is all you really need. And as far as the makeup air for an electric system with that exhaust fan, you really only, I mean, you might have to open the window. You know, as far as that goes, I generally don't even have to open a window because I'm not drawing that much air out, just drawing the steam out. Um, so some people also might think as far as safety is concerned that, you know, you've got water, electricity, probably not the best of friends, but as long as your system is based off of a GFCI circuit, which is a ground fault circuit, interrupt circuit, um, you really don't have any issues with the possible uh, electrocution. And I cannot stress enough, if you do consider doing an electric brewing system, you have to put it on a GFCI. And if you don't know what that is, you know, look that up, hire a, a qualified electrician to do it because it is definitely, you know, brewing beer is definitely not worth dying over. Another pro of electric brewing systems is that you can have repeatability. Um, you, everybody's probably had that one beer where you made it and it was like, oh man, I don't remember what I did. You know, it was like the, the mash was this and it was, you know, something happened with it and all that. And you know, was, I don't remember exactly what we did. As long as you document everything that you do with an electric system, it is absolutely repeatable because you have the controls in place with the controller and timers, et cetera, to be able to absolutely repeat that, that batch of beer, provided you know the yeast is the same and all the, all the other conditions outside of brewing the actual beer is the same, you can definitely repeat the batch. So let's discuss some of the cons about a brewing system. Um, I mentioned it briefly in the beginning, the initial investment sometimes can be a little high. Um, the other con to it 
is that if it is not, and again, I'm going to say stress, heavily stress, if the system is not on a GFCI, there is a good chance not if you'll be electrocuted, but when. So I can't stress enough that that is one of the, the biggest cons of it. If you do not have it on GFCI, you got to do that. Another one of the, I guess it's not, I don't know if it's really a con or not, but another one of the, the cons, if you will, of an electric brewing system is that um, if you don't have a good knowledge of electrical systems and mechanical ability, etc., cetera, um, you either have to buy a system that's already pre-made or you have to have somebody that you know or pay somebody to build a system for you. So that can be one of the cons of it as well. And then also maintaining that system if you're not, you know, technical from an electrical aspect or a mechanical aspect with, you know, drilling holes and doing all that sort of thing. Um, that could be a con to it. But, you know, those things are easily overcome by either buying a system or, you know, if you got somebody that you know that has an electric brewing system, trust me, they'll be more than happy to have you come over, check out their brew day. So let's look at the different types of brewing systems. Probably the simplest of the electric systems would be a brew in a bag system. With that system, you're looking at one vessel generally, you're looking at one pump, one controller, and one heating element. So. You know, the way that that system works is that it circulates the a full volume of water in the, the kettle uh, that you mash with, and there's really not a lot of a sparge out generally to that. I mean, you have the full volume of water in there, you raise the bag up out of the pot, you know, let all of the wort drain out of there, and then you boil from there. So that's probably one of the simplest systems. Um, there's a lot of systems, you know, Braumeister makes one, uh, the Grain Father's another one. Um, I think there's some systems from, I think a place called High Gravity Brewing. So there, there's a lot of companies out there that specialize in making those brew in a bag systems that are electric. Um, some of them even run off of 110. I know the grandfather runs off of 110 volts, which is your standard uh, circuit in your house. Um, I would recommend personally myself that probably you want to do a 240 volt system just because the amount of time that it takes to bring the wort to a boil and make temperature changes ramp up for mash out. Can take a little bit more time on 110 volt element because the wattage is not there. The next system that varies in complexity a little bit more is a rim system. And what that stands for is recirculating infusion mash system. There's several different ways that you can accomplish this system. Generally, it's either a tube with an element inside and a temperature probe that monitors the temperature of the wart going through the tube. And then there's also two vessel systems where the rims tube is actually a second vessel, you put the whole volume of water in the system, run it through, and that second vessel that houses the water uh, maintains the temperature of the mash. So you generally have two elements, two controllers, probably one pump, and um, that is another way to accomplish an electric system. It is a good system as well. That's how I actually started out uh, doing electric brewing, was doing a rims tube. I didn't like it as much because it was a little bit harder to ramp up the temperature on the mash out in my personal experience. I mean, other people may have better luck with it, but now both the brew in a bag system and the rim system are certainly attainable. If you have like two vessels, if you have a mash ton and a boil kettle already, um, that's certainly a system that you can convert to electric from propane. Um, the brew in a bag system, you almost would have to be doing that from the start because it does take a, a uh, substantially larger vessel. If you imagine um, you have to have all of your grain and all of your water in one vessel. So there's, you know, usually for a five gallon batch, you probably want at least a 15 gallon container. Um, some people with that size of container might already be doing 10 gallon batches and don't want to step down to a five gallon batch uh, to do brew in a bag. But those are definitely some options that are available to you, which is a perfect segue into the next system, which I think is the most complex. To me, it was the most satisfying of all the electric builds that I did. Um, and that's the Herm system. Now, HERM stands for Heat Exchanger Recirculating Mash System. So basically what happens with that type of system is that you have a boil kettle, you have a mash tun, and you have a hot liquor tank. Now in the hot liquor tank, there is a coil, and you know, I generally, I, I would like to say stainless steel in most cases, I've seen some copper ones, but I just, I really don't think that copper is probably the proper thing with that because you do have the possibility of developing some corrosion and stuff in there and it's really just not I just I don't think that that's something that you know that people should do quite honestly I, I would prefer to see people use stainless steel for that but what happens in the uh, Herm system is that you mash in with your full volume of grain and water and then you recirculate your mash through the coil that is in the hot liquor tank and when you do it actually helps you maintain your temperature of your mash so I mean if you want to mash it you know whatever let's say 148 or 149 or 
even if you you know if you're kind of on the lower end of the mash because you want a lighter beer you don't have to worry about that temperature falling off like you would if you're doing it in a cooler so you can maintain that mash temperature at a certain you know at whatever your set point is and generally it will you know in my experience it'll hold it within a half a degree usually my system holds it you know 100 percent at whatever temperature that i want to want to set it at so um and then obviously you have a controller usually in a control box and then i you know I, most of the systems that i see have two pumps one to recirculate the mash and then one also to pump the wort over into the boil kettle so we've discussed you know the different types of electric brewing system. So now let's kind of talk about some of the components. Um, probably the main, you know, what I consider to be the brain or the heart of the electric brewing system is going to be the PID. That stands for proportional integer derivative. Basically, it looks at your system, takes some calculations in a learn mode, and it formulates how much electricity it needs to apply to the element in the, in the hot liquor tank in order for it to maintain a certain temperature. Uh, there's a little bit more of an explanation to it than that, but in layman's terms, that's pretty much what it is. It, it's a, it is a control box that runs an algorithm and you set it up into a learn mode and it fluctuates the temperature up and down to determine, you know, if, if it applies this much electricity to the element, how much does the temperature raise? And then, you know, the, so it, it determines what the thermodynamics are, are of your system are by running it through a test mode. And then once you do that, then pretty much, you know, any of those temperatures, it'll hold at, at, at that set point. Now, another piece or component of the electric brewing system, which is almost equally important, is an SSR. Now, what that is, is a solid state relay. So it is basically a relay that has no moving parts. If you ever heard your turn signal, the click of your turn signal, whenever you turn your turn signal on in your car, that's a mechanical relay. That relay would not really, that type of relay wouldn't work in an electric brewing system because of the fact that, you know, whenever, whenever the PID is making those fine-tuned adjustments to hold the temperature where it's at, I've seen the light on my element, you know, just flash, just blink, 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 just barely blinking a couple times. Um, so, you know, that type of relay would wear out very quickly. So it's really, that's really not the type of relay you want to use for an electric brewing system. You definitely want to use an SSR. One of the other aspects that we talked about in electric brewing is the pumps. Now, they're not your ordinary everyday pump. Most of the pumps that are made specifically for electric brewing, they are a magnetic impeller pump. So basically what that is, there is a magnet on the motor, and then there is a magnet that is over top of that in a sleeve type fashion, and those two magnets work in conjunction to turn the impeller. Now why that is good for electric brewing is that you can actually shut the flow of the pump completely off and it won't affect any of the mechanicals in the actual motor itself. So you could, you could stop the flow in a magnetic impeller pump and it will actually not harm anything and then you can adjust it proportionally to whatever you need it to be, which is, is definitely vital when you're doing, uh, when you got the pump running on your mash tun, uh, you wanna be able to control that flow pretty precisely so that you can circulate your mash but not compact your grain bed because if you open up the pump all the way, um, you certainly do have the potential to compact the grain bed and then you know the flow stops and then it's, you know, getting out the mash paddle and magnetic impeller pump is definitely vital in the system. Um, it's not only good for, for doing your mash, but also transferring the, the wort to your boil kettle. Um, and then I also use it with mine to transfer it from the boil kettle through my counterflow chiller into my fermentation vessel. So that, that is definitely a vital part of an electric brewery as well, as well as it removes a lot of the heavy lifting. I mean, anybody that's brewed with propane, they probably have taken their kettle full of hot wort, set it up on a bench or up on a table and let it gravity drain into their, you know, fermentation vessel after they've chilled it with their, their, uh, uh, chill coil or whatever they've done. So, you know, it takes a lot of the heavy lifting out of there, which is always nice. I mean, you know, I'm a big guy, but I still, you know, if I can, if I can cut down on the manual labor, awesome. Well, that pretty much concludes the introductory portion of the series. I could do 30, 45 minute long series. I really don't want to do that because I think this is a series that's probably best consumed uh, in small portions. So I'm going to try to keep the episodes down to about 10 minutes if I can, and uh, I'll title them as such. So, you know, if, if you're a complete beginner, then you may want to start at the beginning with this video. Um, if you're not, um, you know some things about the electric brewery, what it is and how it works, and you may want to skip on to some of the other episodes. Um, but as always, comment, Subscribe for more content. If you want to keep up with this series, definitely hit the subscribe button and comment down below. Let me know if there's something that you want to see in the future episodes. 
Um, you know, comment, let me know if there's something I left out or if there's something I got wrong. I am by no means the foremost authority on electric brewing. I just know what I've experienced, what I've done in the builds that I have, I have done. And I've done a ton of research. There's a lot of things to read out there, websites everywhere. I'll link to a couple of them below. Um, the, the electric brewery was actually an inspiration of, uh, of my system that I have here. So I'll link that below. He's got a ton of good stuff. If you want to see a little bit more about the system behind me, I, def I do have a homebrew talk uh, thread that is just dedicated to this entire build. Um, and I go through the build from basically from start to finish from the area that I built in. I put in a floor drain. There's a whole bunch of stuff there. So I'll link that down below as well. Until next time, this has been Brian for Short Circuit of Brewers. Have a great day.